ok here we are in the sun coast technical college cost tech education center all the students graduated for the third year and it's an empty room because they're all working taking a little tour of the facility right here it's warming up our VF2 so we can finish running these coasters designed by our second year student with a solid work so is had these anodized by our local company roaring toys makes a lot of high-level custom motorcycle machine parts and this is a process they use all the time and we'll show a little video of that in a moment but we are here to talk about setup CNC machine setup okay originally in the 1980s when I worked for methods machine tools and some then some other smaller shops we were taught this method right here we had no work coordinates uh, all we had was height we had one offset only and we call the height offset for tool one would be h1 so we would measure this number right here we would get a distance from here to the top of the park however we did it with either a block one a two inch block a shim a piece of paper i prefer the block method myself now they have dial indicator blocks and sometimes they have ones with lights on them so what we would do for tool lengths for each tool we would put this in you'd have tool one h1 would be a negative 10.015 and if you had a work coordinate system you would leave the z alone at zero uh, then we were bought by another company that says we're not doing it that way anymore. We're going to go off the table. So, uh, everybody in the shop was up and up, an uproar, but we were now able to share face mills on multiple operations. Do Instead of doing all one op, we can do two or three ops on one machine with a line devices. So, what we did was we we put all the tools to a common surface, common surface on this case being a two inch block off the table. The tools actually blended a lot better on initial setup. So the only thing you had to do is you'd have to end up with a very negative number, more negative than this number. But you need to offset it by using the G54, which we hadn't been using. So we're going to, then we have to find the distance coming up from the two inch block. By the way, I, I don't add the two inches in, I just accept whatever number I get off the block. And then I come up here and I figure out how to get to the top of the park. Put an indicator, put a block off the tool, whatever method you use. So then you put in your G54 a positive number, which mathematically comes out to the same thing. Now we can use multiple operations. Everybody sets the tools the same. You walk up to a machine that has tools in it, and you're pretty much all set. Especially if you have a library of tools that you leave in the machine. It saves a lot of time. And parts come out better right off the bat. Uh, the Haases have probe systems, and this isn't actually unique. We, I worked at a company with pre-probe in which they were measuring from the face of the spindle to the part. Notice the dimension on the left. And the Haas Renishaw probe system does it the same way. The OTS, one touch sensor, is measuring the length of the tool as a six out of spindle. And the probe is calibrated so it measures the distance to the part. So effectively it's a math calculation that is saying ends up with the same number. So, positive numbers in your work offsets is totally different than negative numbers in your, in your, I'm sorry, your tool offsets. Two different handles. You cannot interchange these things. So, if you're running your old machines with no probes, or companies that just choose not to use probes, 
the touching up the top of the part or the cupping up what we call a common surface. I like the table, some people use the back of the vise, but uh, if the shop is doing it one way, it's a nice idea to have everybody in the shop doing it the same way. Less confusion, less crashing, more efficient. And this is the method that the probe uses, all probes, not just the Haas probe. I've run a Mazak, but they run a sharp probe system, and it's the same method. Um, in the old days, they actually would measure the distance from the spindle to the top of the piece with a uh, gauge tool, and uh, the tooling department would roll a rack of tools out, a rack like this, and would have a pile of numbers, and you were to input these positive numbers into the uh, offset. I ran a Cincinnati Millicron that was like that in a very large printing press factory. So that pretty, pretty much sums up how we teach multiple setups so that if you go on the job, you'll be able to be in tune with setting up your machine. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you later.